But if all the things line up, the 73 becomes the big trade. Well, there's a difference between that and a live tweet. A live tweet is when we are still doing something. And you can see those two examples on the oil today. Here's the two examples and the one tweet, well, over two tweets. The first tweet was at 12.16 a.m. And we were talking about this. At Friday's RGL of 71.70, 71.80, and the bullish demand had the oil desks long over the weekend, and they've been well paid with, a, at that stage, a 50 ticks higher price. As it turned out, it was over a thousand dollars higher price. But look at the look at the scenario. The scenario trade is this bottom two lines. Care macro supply hasn't gone anywhere. The last supply came in at 73 dollar handle. Okay, so the 73 dollar handle is where that massive supply is. So we're telling you that there is a possible sell trade off the 73 handle price. When we come up into the $73 handle, the macro is back in play. The short term value is, has been lost, but the macro is back in play. And if you look in the background, what do you see? Once, twice, three times, four times a lady at the top edge. Four times we get level two rejections of price. And therefore, coming into that London Open, coming into the early hours of the Brent pre-market, we see the big volumes, we see the big jam, we see the big opportunity to work short oil off that 73 print. We start saying to ourselves, my goodness, this is setting up that macro trade. Look at the micro, the micro divergence, even in the short term, from today's open, it gives us the perfect opportunity to get that oil short onto the books. $73. But then we get into the idea of what a live tweet looks like compared to the scenario tweets that we send out. When we get into the idea of a live tweet, what are we seeing? What do we see? Well, the live tweet is on the right hand side. Because on the right hand side, you'll see uh, boom of the day, who enjoyed the macro supply at 73 note, into the London Open and a maximum swing at that stage of $1,300 per contract at that stage stopped right at the RGL, okay? But look at the final line. The final line is what we call the live tweet, because the live tweet is something like this. It says, we're still short selling pullbacks at the moment. So we're telling you at 7180s, we're telling you when this price is trading 7180s, 7190s, we're telling you that we're still short selling pullbacks. That is called a live tweet. And this live tweet isn't a scenario, it's something that we are doing right now. It's something that we are executing right now on the right hand edge, a live tweet. We win 100% of these. There are no live tweets on the right hand edge that you will ever be able to say, well, that never made any money or at least scratched out. There's none of them because we are going to be putting a lot of cash behind this short trade. This is information, for example, that's coming from some of the best insiders in the oil industry over in Moscow. So we are short selling pullbacks. The price is at a bottom edge, guys, but look at the value line. So we are short selling pullbacks. We're calling a live short selling trade at 71.79. And when you look at that and say, my goodness, that was a bold call at 71.79, considering it was a, considering it was a uh, RGL price, how the hell would you be able to be confident about that sell trade? Well, here it was here, right? This is the sell trade here. This is the one we started to take just here. You'll see the time of that tweet. The time of um, the time of this tweet was 10:52 a.m. We got a little level two here at uh, 71.80s at 11 o'clock, eight minutes later. So that should have been your trade at 11:180 at 71.80. So what happened next? We sold again at 71.80, and then the price breaks. We ended up being able to pick up some business at 70.80s off the bottom print price here, and we've been able to buy that 70, 70, 80s, 70, 90s area, and we've managed to take it up to 71.30, 71.40. So you can see that we absolutely live tweeted, live tweeted. We got a 70.80 to a 70.90. 
that's a $900 live tweet. $900 of profit on a live tweet. Unbelievable. Not really. When we see the trade in terms of the order flow at 8, 7 o'clock this morning, look at what was happening up here. Does everybody see what an accumulation looks like in terms of order flow? Look at these voltics. See how we draw a line and we can cut off all the voltics in this trade here? Look at all those voltics into those high prices. And you think to yourself, somebody's busy selling this. And then you look at the price and you go, somebody's busy selling everything above 72.90. Who could that possibly be that's busy selling everything above 72.90? When we've tweeted out that the big supply is in at 73 handle. Who could that possibly be? All the big commercials, right? All the big commercials are now busy selling oil at 72.90 break. 72.90, 72.95, 73 to the tick. 73 to the tick. Look at all those buy deltas trying desperately to pour in and give us some uh, volumes. And then the buy deltas here. Look at the withdrawal of liquidity on this candle. Look at the withdrawal of liquidity on this candle. Look at the withdrawal of liquidity on this candle. The buying deltas haven't capitulated yet. And then all of a sudden, down we go. Look at that, guys. Look at that for a sell trade. Is that not phenomenal? There was a top line. You can see exactly what happened. There's the breakthrough there. There's the breakthrough. There's the top edge. Just a, almost as if the way we draw it. Paul would wish he was a gold trader, or a, an oil trader, instead of a gold trader at this top edge, right? Because it gave us level 2 liquidity three times. And we got that sensational sell trade away from that price. You can see what happened. I mean, it's not uh, it's, it's not hidden from view, guys. It's not hidden from view, is it? Let me just rescale this so that we can uh, see what the damn thing looks like. And then into the low prices, you can see all the various things that happened. There was a sell trade, 73. Low price is $71, $2,000 profit this morning. And it's just crazy, crazy, crazy good. Crazy good. But it's not about the oil in isolation. This is what we said right at the beginning of the, uh, the day today. Was it wasn't about the oil or the gold in isolation. It was about a storyline building in the background about US dollars. And if you look back at the dollar tweets, <clears throat> we made very, very clear mention of the euro dollar positioning. We told you about the carry trade developing into the overnight session. We told you very much about all the elements from last night. And we said that the dollar is going to catch a bid because the carry is going to bring the dollar into play, isn't it? And what happened? We got long dollars off of the carry trade. And then when you look at the carry trade developing storyline, look at what happened here, guys. It's about RGLs. It's about that huge... Uh, toxic, does everybody see the toxic levels? Nick asked about the toxic order flow, uh, toxic uh, levels. Do you see that this is a toxic top edge up here? Why is it toxic? Well, does anybody see the speed of the moves off the high price? If that's not toxic, nothing's toxic, right? So there's a massively toxic sell side level up here, right? Massively toxic sell side level. And we can recognize just how toxic it is. <clears throat> so we now have a great level to sell from. We've now got a brilliant level to sell some toxic order flow from. So what's going to happen? Well, what did we see? What did we see last night? What did we see last night in terms of the dollar index? We knew what was going to happen probably 13 hours ago. Take a look at my tweets from 13 hours ago and see what, see if you think it's right. Our big dollar winner on Friday was this short trade. We weren't expecting it, but obviously it developed some real legs and it carried on through to target prices. You remember we drew these two circles in for you in the, in the London session, in the New York session. A big exit, a big pullback sell trade twice, and then another big exit at the bottom edges here. But look at the comments from midnight last night. After a big dollar winner on Friday, we should see the dollar carry improve on Monday. Why did we think the dollar carry was going to improve on Monday? Well, because whilst we don't have the dollar carry information, we do have the twos fives information. So because the dollar carry had been 
lagging a little bit behind the twos fives, we know that the dollar carry must improve at the London Open. It must. So when the Germans and the Europeans come to their desks on the Monday, the carry trade has improved significantly for long dollar positioning. So we could obviously pick up on that thread as early as we like, because unless the twos fives changes, the carry trade will be bullish, will lead to dollar buyers. And therefore, we start watching for those opportunities at the London Open. When we come into the London Open, the price has already factored in a fair amount. But we're still a little bit shy of that big commercial toxicity. Now, I'm not a buyer in here. That's not going to be a trade that I'm going to enjoy at all. So I know that the bulls are probably going to play it, but I'm not going to buy at those prices because obviously it's already, it's already traded it. It's already priced in the trade. It's already priced in the trade, hasn't it? So if it's already priced in the fact that the carry was going to open bullish, and the carry obviously did open bullish from yesterday's, uh, from Friday's close, then obviously it's already priced in. But how much is it priced in? You don't know. And I don't know because nobody knows. It's only going to be determined by the price action that then follows. If people think the carry has been fully priced in, the price won't move. If people think it's been overpriced in, the price will sell. And if people think it's been underpriced, people will buy. So obviously what happened was the London session opened. The carry trade's already been traded. We made a lot of money buying uh, dollars last night in line with my tweet. We made a lot of money. And then when the decision was to take the market bid, that's what the decision is. I'm not going to argue against it. So what I'm going to be looking for is that I now know that that is definitely now way overpriced because I've now got a measure against some toxic selling in the background. And if people sold against the carry trade over here at 11 o'clock on Friday, if that big sell came in against that carry trade at 11 o'clock on Friday, and the carry trade is massively divergent against that. Now, the carry trade is down here at the same time as we reach up into those areas. Is it not an automatic sell trade? Is it not an automatic sell trade as we trade into these areas? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we now know we have an automatic sell trade on the, on the dollar. We're going to be selling top line. We're going to be working those... Uh, very, very nice opportunities into the dollar sell trade. And obviously, that's up to us to try and find some liens. Now, they withdrew liquidity heavily. We can see that coming into the London Open, they were definitely, and it comes back to what I was talking to um, the guys about, about the, uh, the the question Alex had asked about the overnight session in, uh, in the Asia Pacific session. And I said that it's all about liquidity. It's all about leaning more on the order flow, leaning more on the uh, the tape in the overnight session because there's a lot of manipulation to try and get prices higher or lower. Well, as you come into the London session, what's the only thing we have to base our London Open with? What do we keep telling you to do in the when we're getting into big data releases or big or big price releases? What do we keep telling you to do, guys? It's one thing we keep telling you to do coming into the big trade levels, the big narratives, the big time of days. What's the one thing we always tell you to do that's common across every single market? One thing, guys, just one thing. Obviously, you might say we could uh, get some macro context. Absolutely, macro context makes a lot of makes a lot of sense. Well, wait until it stabilizes, maybe, but by then it might have already have gone. But what else would we do? What else would we, what else must we do every single time we come into a big data release? A big time of the day. Dealer positioning, Kuba, right? We want to get a read on the dealer positioning. We want to know if the dealers are short or long coming into these areas, coming into this time of the day. Yes, is that reasonable? Is Kuba 100% correct? Have we said that this is what we do before every big time of the day and big release? Absolutely, right? So coming into, coming into 8 o'clock, 
What's the dealer positioning on the euro? What's the dealer positioning on the euro coming into eight o'clock? Come on, guys. What's the dealer positioning coming into eight o'clock? It's dead obvious. Short. Short. It's so easy to spot that the dealers are short coming into 8 o'clock. You might look in the background and say, how do you know? Because the delta is back to this level here, right? The delta's back to that level there. The price is on a halfback, right? So by rights, the price should be up here. That's where the price should be. The price is on a halfback. So therefore, my read at the London Open is that the dealers have a fairly substantial, a fairly substantial short position. So if we can recognize that the dealers have a fairly substantial short position, we know why they're getting short is because they want to they want to pass those trades off to uh, sellers at lower prices. Of course, that's why they've got a short position. Well, why would they why would they think that's going to work? They must believe that the euro is going to sell off at the open. And obviously, therefore, they are getting into that position ahead of the open, as they sometimes do, not always. But they've already given us a read. They've already told us what they think is going to happen at the London Open. And obviously, as we come into the carry trade, that's exactly in line with whose read? My read. Correct? Is that not in line with my read? What did I say last night, guys? What did I say last night? We should see the dollar carry improve on Monday, placing offers into the London Open of the euro dollar. Yes? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Is that exactly what we told you that would be, is that exactly what we told you we believe is going to be happening? Now, this is a scenario, not an, this is not, telling you that that's exactly what is going to happen, because value might have changed in the overnight session. There might have been some crisis. There might have been some big change in the twos fives. But anything other than that, this is what's going to happen at the London Open. So we're telling you that we're looking to see offers being placed into the London off Open. Does this chart confirm that that's what's happening, yes or no? Does this chart confirm that those offers are on the euro dollar? at the London Open. Yes, they do. So when we tie those two pieces together, are we now convinced that the euro dollar has a little bit more in it? Yes, we are. So the sales into the London Open make sense to me. The sales in the London Open is exactly what the commercials still are doing. The dealers are still doing because they think that because of the carry trade, there's going to be some dollar demand at the London Open. So we position ourselves in line with the dealers. And what happens? The price trades are level too high. They run some stops. They get some liquidity into the London Open. They get some liquidity into the London Open. And then the price sells off. Look, there's not even any sellers in this. There isn't even any sellers in this. There's no sellers. And yet the price was still able to move beautifully. Now, why, what are we waiting for? Well, of course, the thing that you'd probably be thinking is, well, we know where the dealers are going to be exiting out of this because there's the low price at 1310s in a high price of 1320s. So the dealers are probably going to be thinking a break of 13 handle probably is going to start creating some edges at the bottom edge. And then it breaks 13 handle and there's not a really a lot of selling yet. And then the dealers get short again through this phase. They get short the 13 handle, don't they? So the dealers get short off of this Voltic here. And then they get short off of this lean here. 13 handle is now offered. 13 handle is now offered. You'll hear myself and Mike shouting this out all the time. 13 handle has gone bid. Buyers are now holding the 13 handle bid. So they, well, you should be leaning against that. 13 handle or even a break of the 13 handle. If the level's gone offered, this is what we're talking about. The level's gone offered. 
because with all that buying delta, the level should have went straight up. So the level's gone offered. So when we when you hear us going 13 offered, that's it. The price is gone. 13 offered, 90 bids could be the that could be the real money spread, right? So 13 offered, 90 bid, and the price drops all the way down actually to 88. And you see that the first real jam comes in at 88s there, and that was it. That was the bottom edge at that stage, starting to appear just in here with the last, the last of the selling deltas, getting jammed into the bottom edge, and the price comes off the bottom edge quite nicely. Now it looks as if the dealers are still holding the 13 level offered, right? There's the 13 level offered. The deltas are all back in, so you start saying, well, the dealers are still selling off the 13 handle. So let's get some working, some business in here. So you sell back off the 13 handle again, and you're off and running again for this, this, the, the nth time, right? So you can see what's happening to this whole trade from the get-go, from the London Open sells here, the sells on the pullback, the sell on the 13 handle here. What are you waiting on? You're waiting on sellers, because now you're starting to think to yourself, when do we get the sellers coming into this trade? When do we get the dollar, uh, the uh, euro, uh, the euro flipping over? When do we get that trade evolving? At what stage is that going to show up on my my charts? When are we going to start seeing that dollar working into the short side? Because you're already aware now that the short side is definitely visible. You're already aware now that the short side must be something that you want to be trying to capture. You want to try and capture that dollar seller at some stage. So you know the euro is going to have to find a buyer somewhere. And obviously your job is to hunt for that buyer, hunt through the charts to try and find where that buy trade evolves from into these high prices, because you already know that that's where the toxic order flow is. So you start hunting around this 940 area for the buy trade. And what should you see? You should start seeing Voltics, you should start seeing leans, you start seeing those bottom edge buyers. You're certainly not buying at the top edge because you can see the dealers still seem to be selling the 13 handle. They still seem to be offered at 13s at the moment. But obviously the value is now very visible that you can see some commercial buying into this area here. But they're obviously trying to run stops. But eventually the sellers come in here. Look at the short term. Do you see the dealers changing their positions? They weren't able to get enough selling coming in here, look. They weren't able to get enough selling, so they were withdrawing liquidity here. But because the value is so bullish, what do we do against that dealer withdrawal? If the dealer withdraws liquidity, we buy up everything they've got, right? So we buy up what the dealer's got for is in here because the value is very bullish. So the buyers are coming in here and the buyers are coming in here. And then the dealers see some selling coming in and they suddenly realize, wait a second, people are crossing the spreads to get long here. There's no way that's going to be a sell trade now. And when you look back at the value, you already knew it wasn't a sell trade anyway. If you look back at the value at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, there's 11 o'clock right there, right? There's 11 o'clock right there. Would you be buying the dollar, guys? Yes or no? Would you be buying the dollar at 11 o'clock? Just a, just a view on the macro, guys. Would you be a buyer of dollars at 11 o'clock at that price? Not a chance in hell, right? Not a chance. So when you see the dealers getting long, when you see the dealers getting long, which happens in here, take a look. So there's the delta. There's the delta there. There's the delta low for that low swing. And there's the price low right there. The delta's far lower. The dealers are getting long off of those bottom edges. The dealers, stroke commercials, are getting long off the bottom edges. And then we get that easy money withdrawal of liquidity. And then we see the dealers exiting. See it? See how easy it is to spot the exit? Because all of those buy deltas finally come in and the dealers just walk away at that stage. Do you see how clear that is, guys? It's crystal clear, isn't it? So there's your walk away right there. You've just bought off the 1290s. You've walked away at 1306s. Beautiful, easy money buy trade on the euro in line with value. And obviously that stopped the price in the, in the short term. If you wanted to still think of uh, buying into this, if you were still bullish, you got a level two pullback here. You got a nice opportunity if you want to buy back into the trade and then obviously off you go again, again into the top edge. And you can see again, dealers walk away from this point onwards.
the big buying delta gets jammed into the highs then the next buying deltas have no progress to the upside and there's your walk away area right there and that's what you're doing isn't it that's the whole process that you're following so it's about building out these as stories isn't it so we were a hundred percent right spot on perfect with regard to this london open and whilst you might not like taking that trade because the value has opened you can't tell me that that has fully priced in the move because it looks about fair value to me so the dealers buying the dealers getting long euros here just gives you a bit of an insight into that storyline just there sorry long dollars the dealer getting long dollar short euros in that area is absolute perfection it gives us exactly what we wanted to get from that trade narrative right here then into, into the london open and the takeaway from that is pretty superb it's a process of building out isn't it it's very much a process of just building out these storylines and talking of storylines did you see what price gold got to did anybody sell the spike i'm hoping everybody did because it gave it gave paulie's elusive level two that he's been struggling to find today uh it was sharp it was fast it was ferocious but look at the amount of value that was in it look at the amount of value that was in that sell trade at the top edge up here huge right big level two big top edge 92s big macro value divergence into a macro trade level it was fast it was furious it was bloody scary but that's what we have to deal with sometimes scary is good scary makes great trades because nobody likes them except for guys that know what they're doing so scary makes that trade what it is scary gives you the opportunity to get involved in the perfect top line and scary pays off big style scary pays off big style all good all good